anyway, so so and that, by the way, there was one of the major reasons why I decided to start my own company because you know we, uh, you know, look, losing nine months yeah. in a in a race because everybody it was, after the four thousand four, yeah. the four thousand four was the first design to show what you can do with Silicon Gate. I mean, it, when you have a model before, people would say, oh, Silicon Gate, yeah, this is difficult to do. Who yeah, cares? It doesn't do anything better yes. than the others. You know, that kind of stuff, right? So. Now they see it, they say they can test it, say, oh my God, you know, we got to do something, right? So when when the 8080 came out, which was early uh, 74, and we had lost nine months yeah. of lead, six months later, the 6800 of Motorola came out. Yes. It was the first microprocessor of, you know. So that, competition was, was competition. Yeah. yeah, and it was well done. And, uh, and it, you know, so we, we, we risk losing the leadership Took, took me so so much, yeah. you know, my effort to, to, to get it out, to, to, to do it, because when I started with the 4004, Intel was six months late because they didn't, nobody knew how to do it. And so they hired me to do it, okay? And, uh, but they lost six months. And, uh, and so- uh, So this so, time you, you went- So I, 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 had to work, I, no, I had to work 80 hours a week yes. to, to make up for, the, for some of the delay, of yeah, course I couldn't yeah. make up everything. And uh, and so you know n now we we lose nine months because you know or we cannot figure out what to do. I mean, come on, right? So so I decided that's it. That's enough. I, I'm going to go start my own company. So I started Zilog, which uh, and and then I came up with the idea of the Z80, which was which, very as successful. You know, was, it's still in volume yes. production today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Z80. We uh, actually I was looking back at the evolution of of SGS Thompson and. One of the acquisitions made was a company called Mostec. Yeah. And earlier in this week, I was in uh, our facility in, in Capel, uh, which is really kind of a, a genesis of um, Carrollton, where we acquired fabs through this company. And one of the interesting things I saw from Mostec is they they had uh, a second source agreement for the Z80. Yeah. And they also had the rights to the x86 architecture. Yeah. And I find it interesting that uh, around the same time, had they, you know, it'd be interesting to see because you're tied in with both yeah. that being the, the founder of Z80. Um, they went down a path of DRAM yeah. rather than capitalizing on the x86, yeah. which Intel eventually uh, capitalized on. What would you think, or do you think, Moztec and SGS Thompson could have gone down the x86 path and, instead of the DRAM? Well, uh, yeah, they, I mean, they certainly could have could have done probably as good than AMD did, yeah. which you know, as you know, AMD also eventually got the the uh, the license for uh, do, from, yeah. from Intel. Uh, but uh, Mostec uh, was better off process wise than AMD in those days. Yeah. So they probably could have done better. better. Though there was there was room to maneuver with a microprocessor right. like uh, like the 8086 uh, because you know price was fairly high so you could you know you, you were not so tied to yield. Right. But also Mostec was a was a memory company. Right. Most, most the DRAM was was, was, was the was, bit. That was it. The DRAM they, they frankly they did the best for you know, 4K DRAM after the 1103. Right. So Intel had to kind of rush to rush. do. You know, but then the Japanese uh, semiconductor came, came in, in and, and they it was really, over. you know, destroy the, the ecosystem here. The, the only the only survivor is Micron. Yeah, exactly. The only, the only survivor is Micron. Everybody got out except yeah. for Micron. So the Z80 though was extremely. Uh, but the, the Z80, you know, but but you know, I must say that you probably don't. Really don't know, but I gave the license to to, to SGS yeah. uh, for the Z80. Also, uh, Paletto was uh, engineer. Paletto was the CEO in those days, yeah. uh, and uh, you know, and that was uh, probably 70, uh, 77, 78, 77, more, 77, 78. Yeah. You know, that's when I gave the the license of uh, to to, uh, and also the Z8 license right. to uh, to SGS. So how did that? Z80 success translate then to your your next move from the log. Well, I mean, you know, then we did the Z8000, uh, and the Z8000 was certainly better than the 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 8086. But then you know, but then the problem with that, with Zilog was that we have an investor that wanted to compete with IBM, and IBM has said no products of Zilog in this con in this company. So they choose 
the wrong side. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so you know so but, but actually this this is true i mean that's right. what happened and so you know basically we we were cut so, off from the most lucrative and the, because intel in those days they had lost the leadership with the z80 yeah, the z80 yeah. had taken the market over with the 8080 was just uh, you know disappearing right. rapidly so so and the z8000 was much better than right. the 8086 so, so really i mean uh there was it would have been game over if it wasn't for IBM. And then you went to into a telecommunication application. Then I correct? then then my next company was uh, yeah was uh, Signet Technologies to develop a very smart telephone for data and voice. You could you could send the screen and talk at the same time. I mean, something that that in ni 1984 was unheard of. Yeah. So, but was too soon. And and besides, in '84 the entire communication. The system was was upset by the breakup of AT&T. Ah. So, and of course that I didn't see it coming because. And then you went on to found Synaptics. No? Then I found the Synaptics, working on neural networks. Uh, I wanted to make computers that learn, and and was then, uh, and, and it was a time when uh, the people that knew about AI they were they were looking at us like, what stupid <laughs> thing to do? Exactly. Neural networks. Everybody yeah. knows that they don't work, yes. right? Yes. So, <laughs> yes. Well, that's not true because, as you know, you know, starting from 10 years ago, neural networks saved the day of AI because uh, up until 10 years ago, AI with expert systems, their own methodology, never could solve the problems of complex pattern recognition. So, yeah. so it, you know, I was convinced that uh, the neural network could do the job. Uh, it could do it very well, and I, I you know, and the solution was analog in those days because it was the only way to have the 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 uh, you know the density the, the computational power with with two transistors it, it could have been done with one but two transistors multiply add floating floating gate Gates, storage yeah. therefore a non volatile storage for learning and and, and and storing the value and you could you know you could do uh, you know these things billions of operations per second when you know you couldn't do it in the in, in, 80, in 86 87 88 you couldn't do it with digital you know with simulation so we were we were making emulators of neural networks mm -hmm. not simulators of neural networks, which is what people do today and and how did you come up with the name synaptics synapse synapse it's the same yeah. uh, synapse is is that transistor yeah. floating gate transistor yeah. was the synapse yeah. was the was the emulation of the synapse of the, of the neural network 